the Lord. Sunday, April 14th, 2024. And uh, we are touching on a very sensitive topic. Imagine how much God exalts love. Yet God never said without love, it's impossible to please him. He said without faith. Now, if you're a student and you pride yourself in being wise. Your wisdom is not wisdom until you know what to major on and what to minor on. There are some units in university. If you don't pass, it doesn't matter if you pass others. They are called the core units. Even if you get straight A's in the others, if you don't, if you don't pass these ones, you have to go back to class. You have to have a retake. You can't graduate. So faith is a major. It's a core unit in Christianity. And without it, God says, you cannot please him. That is striking. So as a Christian, you should be able to know this thing that God says, without it, I can't please him. What is it? And sometimes it's good when you want to know what something is, to know what it's not. Faith is not hope. And many Christians are living in the realm of hope. And they are convinced they are walking in faith. That is why for 10 years, 5 years, 7 years, 15, 20, they still believe. And their believing is not faith. It's hope. Their believing is unbelief. That one day something will happen. That day will never come. Because faith means that day already came. Now faith. God is eternal. Time is set to govern the physical world. In the spirit world, there is no time. So God does not answer your prayers tomorrow. He answers them now. So if you have to receive the answers, you can't receive them tomorrow. You can't hope for tomorrow. When you're hearing the word like this, God is answering your questions. God is giving you what you want. So you have to receive now. And once you receive, the only thing left, if you've truly received, is giving him thanks not waiting for a manifestation that is walking in unbelief I am waiting for the manifestation did you, did you hear how prophet prayed yes now we are waiting for a manifestation that is a statement of doubt of unbelief of hope and this is the thing, hope doesn't have substance. It's like using money, currency, that is not backed up with gold or something. It is just paper. Meaning, you can't trust it. For, so, for hope, okay, I've gone ahead of myself. I'll show you. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Verse 1. I'm reading from the Amplified Classic Bible. Now, faith is the assurance, the confirmation. Like you get a confirmation message. No, 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 no. Faith is the assurance. 
the confirmation the title deed of the things we hope for faith is the assurance it's the confirmation you've been hoping to get some money in your bank is there money there no see the difference you are hoping to get money in your bank account does it bring money there no so it's hope there is nothing backing it up you can't go to the bank and say i have money here because there is no confirmation message to show that money entered your account now faith is the confirmation faith is the message you receive on your phone that sms message that you receive money has been credited to your account so it's no longer hope now whatever you are hoping for has been given substance because there's a confirmation can you see the difference many delve or many dwell in the realm of hope thinking they 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 in faith faith is the confirmation like in kenya you receive an mpesa message you could be you could be hoping that your phone rings pam pam but it's just a hope there is no substance to it there is nothing proving there is nothing giving flesh to your hopes there is nothing making your hope a reality so faith is reality so when the message comes bam that message is the confirmation of what you are hoping for that message is the reality now that's the form your spirit is like that form when when you allow the word of god okay when the network is jammed the money could be sent but it's not reaching your phone but it was sent to your line when you get network coverage it will pop up but it's you to align yourself to where the boosters are right and then you lift up your phone and i see two bars i see th- then you start seeing money messages what happened money was already sent last week but you didn't have network on your phone you didn't have network in your heart your heart was jammed up with so many things so you could not receive the blessings of god that's what happens to many christians you could not receive so you are in hope when you're still in hope your network coverage is not so clear it's not clear because there is no substance the message coming in now to you not the person sending because faith is personal the person sending you the money he has finished his work me giving you the word me blessing you me prophesying to you i have finished my work so it is you to position yourself your heart to get the confirmation so you are like the phone that receives the message if you don't receive the message does not mean the blessing is not there the blessing has been re- has been released but your gadget the gadget of your heart is not connecting so you are still in hope it is not a reality when this message enters your heart and you believe it and it arrests your heart and it becomes your only truth that is the confirmation that's what faith is it's no longer hope now it's so real to you that house is so real now because from the scripture i have taught you about living in houses you've never built 
I open scriptures and I show you where God says promotion does not come from the east or the west or the south. When you believe that word in your heart, it's a confirmation message. Boom, boom. Yes, yes. It is similar to money entered in your account or your phone. So it's no longer vague. It is not ambiguous now. What you're hoping for has been turned to faith because it is backed up by reality. What is reality? The word of God. Because reality is truth. So faith is spiritual truth. Not physical truth. So if you're waiting for a manifestation, you are lying to yourself. You are deceiving yourself. Because you're not a physical being. Whatever it is you're believing for, the word believing for, should be manifested in your heart. You believe with your heart. For with the heart man believes and to salvation and to deliverance and to promotions and to healing and to prosperity and to receiving money with their heart and to clearing your debts with your heart and to clearing your rent bills with your heart and to building your own homes in your heart with the, the heart a man believes not with the head not with the brain not with the feelings When you wake up not feeling like a Christian, does not change inside. You are still a new creation in Christ. It does not change. So if you have to go with feelings, you'll miss it. Are we together? All right. So, faith is the confirmation. The title deed. You can pay for land. It means nothing until you're given a receipt and a title deed with your name as proof that that land belongs to you. So faith is the title deed of the things you are hoping for. You are hoping to get land in Karim. It's a hope. When the word of God comes to you about land and you believe it, now what you have backing you up is big. Don't worry. What you have backing you up is big. What you have backing you up is the truth. It's the reality. So what you believe in your heart now, that is the title, that is the proof that you have land in Karen not the physical documents how many have physical documents and when they go to court they lose and yet they paid for it it means the land was never in their hearts when it's in your heart backed by the word of god you believe in god's word that's reality that's what faith is it's no longer hope you are believing it, you are embracing it, and even you see how you've built on that land. Your hope has been given substance. It has been promoted now by truth, by reality. That's what faith is. You even built on that land that is in your heart. You can see the cars parked in that land and property, which is in your heart. In your heart. For with the heart, we believe. With the heart, we believe. With the heart, you believe. With the heart, you believe. What is the heart? The inner person, the spirit. Because the spirit is the real you. Not the body. So, it doesn't matter what physically you see. If you go by physical evidence... You are now dwelling in flesh. You are being carnal. To be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be spiritually minded, you will get what you have in your heart and you will enjoy it in peace. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy and pleasures evermore. 
Hallelujah. So you can see faith is not hope. And faith is now. And God answers now. And faith is your response to the word of God now. When you're hearing it, that is when the money is being transferred to you. But now when you don't respond or if you don't respond, you are rejecting that money from coming into the account of your heart. So now you understand why sometimes I get pissed off okay, all the time. When I'm teaching and people are just getting nothing. Because if you knew this word of God is more real than someone giving you a hundred thousand Kenya shillings cash. You'd be full of fire from six in the morning like we start till six at night. Because the words that we speak these are not my words. They are spirit and life. Yes. Did you hear that? Yes. Words are spirit. So hold on. So your cars are spirit. Yes. Your blessings are spirit. Yes. The souls we want to, to win are spirit. Yes. We have to find those souls in the word first. Yes. After we find them in the word, when we hear the word. They have to jump into our hearts. Then the souls we want to win. I have a target of five souls this week. They are so real in your heart. And you have the scriptures backing up you being a soul winner. When you go out now, you don't go out hoping to get five. Uh -uh. You have five in your heart. With five in your heart, you have five in your hands. Yes. With the five in your hands, you bring the five to church. Yes. Simple. You are not hoping. You are not hoping. Faith is not a hope. Hope is not realistic. Hope is unreal. It only becomes real when it's backed up by the word of God. So it's important to have hope. But now the hope becomes a reality when you have the word of God to back it up. Casa triple free al Alright? Faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see. It's the proof of things we don't physically see. That is what faith is. It's the proof in your heart. There is no such thing as I am waiting for the manifestation. All right? Uh -uh. The manifestation happens in your heart. When the word of God comes to you and you accept it. That time you accept it. Before God... The thing has become yours. It has your name. That promotion is yours. That healing is yours. He said, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I am a prophet. I lay hands on you. I speak the word. And the sinus is open. Yeah. And the fever dies. Yeah. As I'm speaking, it's not for example. It's happening now. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Warmth is coming to you. Yeah. That cold is going away. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. With the heart, man believes. With the heart, man believes. With the heart, man believes. I insist. It's with the heart. Now it means this. With the heart, you receive. With the heart, you receive. And with the heart, you reject. So whatever it is you'll have in this life, 
whatever it is you see around your life it is something that you have received with your heart or you've rejected with your heart it's that simple very simple this teaching will go all over the world it must this is a global mandate and you hear people calling from all over the world saying this teaching changed my life as a Christian because now I know what faith is and I know what faith is not. I have been living in hope. Now I am in faith. Faith is a joy. Because faith is reality. Faith is wisdom. Faith is God's wisdom. Yeah. Proof. Proof of things we do not see physically. It's the proof of things we don't see physically. And the conviction of their reality. The persuasion of their reality. Because in truth, the word of God is reality. And the word of God is spirit and life. You want life to your business? Hear the word of God. Life in your marriage? The word of God. What the word of God says about business. What it says about marriage. What it says about children. What the word of God says about healing. About working in health. Provision. Prosperity. Promotions. Your career. Your intelligence. Wow. Mm -hmm. And the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as a real fact. What is not revealed to the senses. Which senses? The physical senses. Yes, I know we were here Friday night till yesterday morning in prayer. And I know the move of God was powerful. And windows were closed. And people were... They, they, they were wild winds everywhere. Wild winds everywhere. Wild winds, you know you're feeling on your feet you're feeling and you're wondering where is this coming from and there are walls around but you're feeling the wind here wind here that is good the holy ghost is moving the angels of god were moving that is all good yes but faith is not a feeling and our faith should not be based on our experiences should be based on the word of god that makes it real. God lives now. God lives in the eternal now. When he says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever, he does not say that for himself. He says that for people. Because people live yesterday, today, forever, to tomorrow. But he's the same. He's in the constant now. So God will not answer your prayer tomorrow now so when do you receive your answers so after that the work of the devil is to come and make you doubt make you think you're stupid because the devil wants to bring you into the realm of logic and physical evidence when you're in that realm he will beat you every day he tells you okay now that you've received a house, hmm, how come you're still going back to that bed sitter? Can't you see you're being unrealistic? Can't you see you're being brainwashed? Hmm? Can't you see? Now that you've received a car, how come you can't even afford Uber? You have to use a matatu. Can't you be realistic? Can't you see you're being deceived? Can't you be logical? Can't you be reasonable? That is the voice of the devil. He does not speak with horns and smoke. That's how he speaks. Every voice that comes opposing God's word is the devil. So that time, you don't have to shout or just say, devil, listen, I have grown in faith and I must pay it. And he tells you, you know, you don't have the car or you will not have the car 
this is a lie. You say it's true. I will not have it. I cannot have what I already have. It's mine. There is no argument. Say, devil, you've come too late. So, in the name of Jesus, shut up. The car is mine. The house is mine. The souls are mine. The new venue is mine. Yeah, and uh, the marriage is mine. The children are mine. The healing is mine. The deal is mine. The show is mine. Yeah, so it's not about uh, me coming to have it. I am a spirit. I am an eternal spirit. I serve the eternal God of now. I am not going to receive the car. I already received it. I am not going to receive my promotion. I already received it. Hold on. But some people were promoted, but you are not. You say, no, no, no. I was promoted before them. They have not yet received the notice from heaven. But I'm promoted. I am rich. The bank account is here to receive the notice. But my heart received the notice. And what matters is my heart. Because God judges my heart, not the bank. So devil, I'm sorry. But you see now I have beaten you. Shame on you. Just relax and wait for lack of fire. That's how you talk to him. Simple. And you are told, when you do that, he flees. Because the word of God burns him. He can't stand the word of God. Coming from the mouth of a believing Christian. <laughs> the word of God is beautiful, right? Yeah. Now, Hebrews verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please and to be satisfactory to God. Imagine. Without, faith, without what I've just told you, it is impossible to please God and to be satisfactory. Another version says to be well-pleasing to him. Because he's our father. And he expects us to behave just like him. He expects us, if we are to create anything, he expects us to create just like he creates. If it is beating the devil, he expects us to beat him just like him. So that is why he says, without this, it's impossible to please me because this is how I operate and I have created you in my own image to create like me, to function like me. And I thank God because today it's all about recreating your life. So after this service, we'll start building on the next services on recreating your life. Creating like God. And you'll see in the creation account, God saw what he wanted, meditated by the Holy Ghost, then spoke. Then after speaking, he went to work physically in chapter 2. Chapter 1 of the book of Genesis is an account of spiritual creation or the spiritual order of creation. Chapter 2 is the physical order. The spiritual comes first in creating anything you want. And because faith is an act, now physically now you go out because the Kaiser, now you work towards it. You do this towards it because it is yours now. Alright. For whoever would come near to God must necessarily believe that God, first of all, exists. And that he is the rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him out. How do you seek him out? Through his word. You only find God in his word. So the more you believe the word, the more you believe in God. So you see why? It's impossible to please him without, without faith. Because if you don't believe him, it means you don't be, if you don't believe the word, it means you don't believe him. Mm -hmm. 
I want to give you some examples. I already told you about the money in your account. Now, you know, you can, I can stand here saying, I hope I have 1,000 in my pocket. I hope. Then I got the pocket. There is no 1,000. Maybe we should do a demonstration. Right? So, Brother Shane, come here. Come here. Just hope that you can have a phone in your pocket. Hope. Say it. Okay, touch your pocket. Is there a phone? No. Now, a firebrand preacher like me comes and speaks about miracles and all these things and you're receiving in your heart and you're getting and you say yes amen amen like, now because you did you receive the word yes, sir. miracles yes, sir. everything yes, sir. so when you receive when you receive it did in your heart yes. so now you can no longer say i hope i have a phone i have a phone yes, faith is having faith is possession you cannot hope for what you possess you only hope for what you don't have i am hoping god had me no he didn't hear you because those who come to him must believe that he exists and as he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him so if you are hoping that he had you it means you don't understand hebrews 11 6 you never hope for what is already in your possession. Yeah. When you receive the word of God, you say, I believe it. Whatever you're believing God for what you had, the inspiration you got, thought, now hold on. This means that job is mine. Yes. It means now it is in your spirit now. So what you're left with is thanking God. Right? And now, Going further, having the phone in your pocket, you, you, can't, you can't say, I, I, I desire to talk to Brother GT. I desire to talk. You will never talk to him until you take the phone out of your pocket and dial. Then you can talk to him. Meaning, receiving the word of God is not enough. You have to receive the word. You have to use the word you have received. You have to put it to work now. You believe you are promoted. You become the most excellent in your organization. Because you are promoted. You believe you are promoted. So you change your wardrobe. You believe you are promoted. You change how you talk. You believe you're promoted. You change where you eat. Yes. You're a manager now. Yes. Say, say, no, you know my, my, my salary. But, but you know, prophet, my salary. No, you've not yet received. When you receive, there's some places you won't go to eat with the other colleagues. Because you're now their boss. They don't know, but you're their boss. Yes. So they say, let's go for lunch. You'd rather come with packed lunch. But you can't go to that dingy place. Because... They don't have the memo, but you do. Thank you, thank you. They don't have the memo, but you do. You are their boss. So you have a different sitting. Can you see faith? Uh -huh. That's very important to note. And we're almost done. It's like a chef or a woman or a wife who has a recipe for cooking food. You can't sit with your husband in the living room or wherever and say, you know, I really know how to cook. You know, this is how you cook. And the husband told you, I'm hungry. Prepare this for me. You say, oh yeah, that recipe, I have it. You do this first, you do this first, you do this first, you do this. It'd be like, are you mad? Whatever you're telling me, go to the kitchen and do it. Because telling me will not bring food on the table. 
Everything you require, all the ingredients are in the kitchen. When you receive the word of God, all the ingredients you have for your miracle are in your heart. When you receive the word of God, all the ingredients you require for the miracle are inside. So start working out your own salvation. Start working out your own promotion. Start working out your own healing. Work out your own prosperity. Now you understand why I say, if you truly believe that you're big and you're rich, start giving like a rich person. You won't say, well, if I give my car, uh, what will happen? The person talking to you has given cars and still gives cars. And I never thought, where will another car come from? Because I saw from the word of God, when I give, it comes back. So I don't wait for it to come to my parking to say, now I have received. No. When I am giving, I am receiving. Based on that scripture, Luke 6, 38. Jesus said, give and it shall come back to you. Not the same way you gave. But in a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Will be given to you. And I said, Jesus, this means to me. He said, yes. I said, fine. He said, take this car and take that car and take the title, uh, title deed and take this other one. Why? Because now I have received much more according to your word. Thank you, Father. And after doing that the first time, for one year or so, physically, there was no car in my parkings. And some people thought I was stupid. Right now, I don't have space for another car. I am looking for a bigger, okay, I'm not looking for, we have a bigger compound in the other place where I can fit all these other cars. There is a gentleman who came last month to give me another car. I told him, wait. Where will I put it? I said, wait. Are you getting it? So I responded to the word of giving. It became real to me. Faith is personal. So it doesn't matter how much I teach you this. If you don't make it personal, you will give, you will never receive. You know why? Because you never received the answers first in your heart. And even by your giving, you gave by compulsion. Not out of faith. Not because the word of God entered you and you said, my God, you know what? This is real. This is for me. This thing is true. This thing works. So I'll give. Because I'm giving and God says, there is a word for return. And it comes back more than this. Any sensible farmer, when they go to sow seed, they don't see the seed they've sown. They see it the last time before they cover the ground. Then they see it no more. Once they cover the ground, the seed is dead. Only thing they think of now is harvest. And as they are working towards harvest, they are, they are watering the seed. Just watering the seed. You are thanking God. You are thanking God. You are testifying. Yes, you know I am, a, I am promoted. You are testifying. You know I have many cars. You are testifying. You know I'm, a, I, I'm the number one soul winner in the God nation. You are testifying now. Our cell group is the best now. Because it is real in your heart. Uh, so you stand up, go to the kitchen, fix the food. So, once you receive the word of God, it's like receiving money. If you don't use it, it won't help you. You have to use it. You can't say, I'm very rich. Then you go eat and you stand up and leave. They'll arrest you. With money in your pocket. Meaning, with healing in your heart, you can die of sickness. With healing virtue in your spirit, you can die of sickness. The physical body can die of sickness. With healing virtue, because you didn't release the healing virtue. You didn't use it. After receiving, you have to use. 
after receiving whatever you're receiving from God, you have to use. When I say when you receive the word of God, the word of God to me, these are words or images, pictures. It's a movie encapsulated in words. Look at the movies. Look at the movies. When you read, they are given scripts. But the scripts bring out a motion picture. So you've been given a script. Out of this, produce your own motion picture. Your own story of success. Out of the word of God that you receive. Your own story of healing. Your own story of prosperity. Your own story of victories. Your own story of resilience. Your own story of persistence. Your own story of love. Don't watch soap operas. Become the soap opera that the world can observe and say people can get young people can get born again and live in marriages in a way that is admirable. So you become the soap opera stars now. In <laughs> uh, finishing, Joshua 1.8 after the death of Moses, God told Joshua the secret to success. He said, my word shall not depart from your mouth. Faith comes by hearing. My word shall not depart from your mouth. Faith comes by hearing. What are you hearing? Not only here, from your spirit. What are you hearing? What, are you, what do you keep on telling your spirit? What do you keep on telling yourself? What do you keep on telling your environment? What do you keep on telling your marriage? What do you keep on telling your children? What do you keep on telling your bank account? What do you keep on telling your money? What do you keep on telling your body? What do you keep on telling your health? What do you keep on telling your profession? What do you keep on telling your hair? What do you keep on telling your skin? The word of God shall not depart from your mouth. What do you keep on telling your womb? What do you keep on saying about you settling in marriage? What do you keep on telling your womb? What do you keep on saying about the periods? Do they tell you what to say? Or you tell them how to behave? Faith comes by hearing. The word of God shall not depart from your mouth. The word of God shall not depart from your mouth. Not your heart, your mouth. Faith comes by? The word of God shall not depart from your mouth. The word of God shall not depart from your mouth. Why? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If it is so much in your heart, it will be found on your lips. It will be there. So someone tells you, you know your prophet talks about money so much. You say yes, because it is so much in his heart. And if it's not so much in your heart, it won't be found in your words. And if it can't be found in your words, it can't be found in your world. This word shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate in the word of God day and night. So that Meaning meditation causes you to observe, to do what the word of God says. So that what happens? You may have what? Good success. You may be prosperous. All your ways may be prosperous. And then you have good success. First class success. When you keep on talking to yourself, you receive the word. When you receive that word, it's a word of prophecy. Use those words as weapons of war to fight well and win. How? You keep on saying them. You keep on talking them. You keep on thinking them. You keep on creating the images you like by them. You speak in tongues with them. You Definitely, you will win. 
it's a guarantee you will win. In fact, I'm very sorry. Let me apologize. You will not win. You have won. You have won. Hey. In finishing. James. Hey. Uh, hey. Uh, hey. Uh, hey. Uh. James chapter 2. Still amplified classic. Verse 14. What is the use? What is the profit, my brethren? For anyone to profess to have faith, if he has no good works to show for it, can such faith save his soul? No. Meaning, you can have faith for something, but physically, you will never see it. That's what I just said. You can have faith. It's like money. You've received something, and the something you've received is real. But until or unless you use the money, it won't help you. So just like money, you should know how to release your faith. When you release your money, you get something else. Money is used as a means of exchange. You release the money, you get the services you want. You release the money, you get the goods you want. You release the faith that you've received your healing. You re how do you release that faith? You stand up from the bed. You start walking around slowly. Yes, thank you, Jesus. I have received my healing. Thank you, Lord. Malaka Basaya. Thank you. you could be holding yourself by the walls. You could be in the hospital bed right now. You're watching me. In the hospital ward. Now, because you believe the word of God that Jesus Christ is the atonement for sins and that he has power to forgive sins on earth and to heal. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Say, I've received my healing. Because you've received the healing, if you remain with the healing without doing something with the healing, you still remain in that bed. And that sickness in your body will overpower you. Yet you have the power to overpower it. So you stand up and you start moving. <clears throat> step by step. <clears throat> step by step. <clears throat> what are you doing? You are releasing currency. So when you release, you get something back. Hold on. When you release, you're releasing from your heart. When you get, you get it in your physical body. <laughs> uh, beautiful, right? I'm telling you, this teaching will go all over the world. If a brother or sister is poorly clad, clad means clothed. You thought it was slang, eh? It is not. And lacks food for each day. And one of you says to him, goodbye, keep yourself warm and well fed without giving him the necessities for the body. What good does that do? So also faith, if it does not have works, deeds, and actions of obedience to back it up, obeying what you believe, by itself, it is devoid destitute of power yeah. the faith that you've received the healing without you standing up there is no power that will be manifested on your physical body yes. you believe that you've been healed of the asthma you've received the healing in your spirit then okay I use an inhaler once or five times every one hour so right now, I will use it only once or twice. Now you're putting your faith to work. Mm. Or I'll use it only four times. I was using five pills a day. I'm going to four. After two weeks, I'm going to three. I'm going to two. I'm going to one. I'm going to none. I'm going to one today. Then I jump a day. Then one. Then that is how you do it. Very simple. Not complicated. <laughs> that kind of faith is destitute of power, doesn't have power, inoperative, and dead. That kind of faith doesn't have power. Meaning you won't see the results you want physically now. But in your heart, you keep on saying, but I know I was healed. I know God, do something. No. 
He's saying, now you do something with what you received. Yeah. <laughs> Verse 18. But someone will say to you then, you say you have faith and I have good works. Now you show me you are alleged. It's an allegation. It's not real. Show me, because it's a dead faith. It's on inoperative. It is faith without power. Show me your alleged faith without the works backing it up. And I, by my works, by my actions of obedience, I will show you my faith. So faith is demonstrated. Faith is demonstrated. It is not sat upon. Faith is demonstrated. Faith is demonstrated. Faith is demonstrated. Faith is demonstrated. Yes. Says if you don't demonstrate your faith, it is dead. You are alleging to have it or received something. Maybe you didn't get it. Meaning, um, there is a name for it. You are impersonating. You are now lying against the truth because if it is true you are healed why are you not standing up if it is true you are healed you said you have uh, you are lactose intolerant but I've received healing if it is true why can't you boil the milk and drink it uh, you know um, you know to you it's a joke and God can see you start with a sip Mm. Settle. Then you feel like, mm, say, ah, 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 not today. Ah, not today. You will stay. Yeah. I got healed. You will stay. Yes. That's what you do. And your story changes. Yeah. No, my child is lactose intolerant. You speak as if it is fashionable. It's not. Verse 19, you believe that God is one, there is one God. He says, congratulations, you do well. So do the demons believe and shudder. They tremble in terror and horror, such as make a man's hair stand on end and contract the surface of his skin. He says, your believing does not match the demons believing. Because when the demons hear the name of Jesus, they tremble. When you hear the name of Jesus, you're just like this. They know the power in that name until they start shaking. Verse 20. Are you willing to be shown? Get that. Are you willing to be taught? Are you willing to be shown? Are you willing to be shown proof you foolish and productive, spiritually deficient fellow? I said, faith is wisdom. Faith is spiritual wisdom. Faith is spiritual intelligence. Faith is spiritual understanding. Faith is the truth of God. Faith is the reality of God. Are you willing to be shown proof? You're foolish, unproductive, spiritually deficient. You know, have you ever seen a, a, someone who is deficient of um, some vitamins? Yes. Meaning sick. Spiritually sick person. Unproductive fellow. That faith without the works is inactive and ineffective and worthless. Your money in a corner in your house is worthless. But when you build a property with that money, ah, you get it. So when you use the faith, you get results. When you sit on it, it's like, what do I say? Ladies, you want to get married, but you never leave the house. 
You only leave the house to come to church in an Uber that is tinted. <laughs> then here, here you know, the prophet is very strict. So you pray, you close your eyes from morning till evening. Then when you open your eyes, you go straight to the Uber back home. That is the routine for six months. Then you say, I, 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 I'm, I, I know I received the husband. Maybe it's the Uber driver then. Why don't you dress well? When you come to church, yes. Um, so where do you expect to find the husband? If it's a miracle, it could be here. It could be in a mall. It could be in a restaurant. Look good. With your other girlfriends in church. Go out. Not to a club. A good restaurant. That is a demonstration. That is the action. To prove. And when you're going out, you're going out, you know where you're going out. You're not going out for food. Yeah. No, no, stop the jokes here. You know, Christians like joking a lot. If you want to get married and the word has gone forth, then know the restaurants you're going to. Not some stupid restaurants from some corner this side of town. You will get, you will get, you will get a result of where you're going. Go somewhere that someone someone decent can be found. What you are eating, someone is scratching himself. Doesn't have an handkerchief. Wiping, wiping the sweat. Asking for wembe. Asking for sosa. Dunga yo chapati. Reta madodo. You'll get, you'll get a husband of that caliber. And if you're a man, you'll get a wife of that caliber. Manamke wa kudunga. Siwezi. Siwezi. Joro, ebu di dugi shapo. Duga. Atakuja kudunga pesa yako hivyo. Go classy place. Nice place. Even if it's a cup of tea, go to Radisson Blue. Go to Morven Peak. Go, go, go these going places. Not always. We, we find you, we just find you funny place. Even when you're entering, you're holding your pass. When you're eating, you, you, you're protecting your food, your pass, because even they can take the sausage from this other side. Then that's the man you want to go out with anyway. Your faith is active, but in the wrong side. Mm, the wrong side. So you understand? You want to work, but you're always in the, in, in the house. Work will find you out. By going out, it's a proof you believe. Yes. There's a lazy, foolish person will look at the sky and say, it will rain, so I'll remain in the house. Imagine you're a salesperson. And then it's raining. If it's me, it's a, it's a Saturday and it's raining. It's a perfect day to go to sell. You know why? Many people in the house But a foolish man, a foolish woman will say, it's raining. Hey, I can't go out. Who will I find outside? Is it not better to find someone inside? Yes, they have time. It's raining. They are going nowhere. Yes, so everything that comes as a disadvantage is an opportunity yes, to fulfill your dreams. Was not, verse 21, was not our forefather Abraham shown to be justified, made acceptable to God by his works when he brought to the altar as an offering his own son Isaac? God didn't say, I know you believe me. I know you believe me. Just don't do anything. No. When he put Isaac on the, on the altar, God said, no. Nah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you truly believe you see that his faith was cooperating with his works. His faith was cooperating with his actions. His faith was cooperating with his actions. Do your actions match what you say you believe in your heart? Do your actions match what you say you believe in your heart? Do your actions, do you know why people, uh, why people sin and believe? 
If you believe you have power over sin, if you truly believe, you won't sin. Your actions will match, will cooperate with your heart. <laughs> if you believe the job is yours or the promotion, then people come and say, there are promotions, my name was not there, and you're crying. It shows you never believed. You'd laugh. I've told you my own personal stories. I was never discouraged. I was like, I don't care. You've just been promoted one step. I know mine is five steps. And when it came, it was five steps. And in less than one year, another step. And before I left, another step. So who had the last laugh? I had the first and last. <laughs> his faith was cooperating with his actions. His faith matched his actions. I am healed, I am healed. Stand up. Start eating. I am wealthy, I am prosperous. Start giving. God will bless the work of my hands. You're doing nothing. You, you get it? Yes, Does not matter what you're saying. Yes. It says God will bless the work of your hands. This hand is doing this. The other hand is doing this. And his faith was completed and reached its supreme expression. Faith is an expression when he implemented it by actions his faith reached its supreme expression when he did his actions he was expressing what was in his heart so your tears express what is in your heart you are silent when you receive the word of god is an expression of what is in your heart it's a proof that you've not received anything can you get it now? Yes. When you pray and then you leave, amen. Amen. It's a proof. It's an expression that you've not received. Because someone has received anything unless you're, unless you're Hitler. Yeah. You should be happy. Yes. Because even the person giving you those things is God Almighty. Yes. How can you not show him gratitude? Yes, and you've received so after prayer, if you've truly received, hey, 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 thank you, Father. You are so kind. Thank you. You are so generous. Thank you. Yes, I got it. Yeah. Oh. You see that? It's different. Uh. Verse 23, and so the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed in God, appeared to God, trusted in God, relied on God. And this was accounted to him as righteousness, as conformity to God's will in thought and deed. And that is why he was called God's friend. God says, ah, this one is acting like me thinking like me believing like me expressing his belief like me how in the book of genesis chapter 1 and god created in the beginnings god created heaven and the earth then verse 2 there is nonsense going on there is no place god cried there is no place god started saying devil what have you done there is no place god says devil it's all your fault God treats the devil as a non-entity. So God looked and started meditating. He started creating pictures of what he wanted from the mess he was seeing. You do a blunder once, you want to kill yourself. Continue. We won't come for the burial. It's nonsense. It's pride. You are not your father's daughter. You are not your father's son. God saw the mess. It was like, okay. Holy Ghost. Meditation. Brooding over the mess. Brooding over the mess to produce something from the mess. Oh, yeah. Then he started speaking what he wanted to see. And what he was seeing. 
And when he was speaking, it was becoming as he wanted it to be. And he was saying, he was finishing by, it is good. I like what I'm saying, it is good. It is good. It is good, it is good, it is good. Then, chapter 2, he goes to the physical work. God says, this is what made Abraham his friend. Hey. Verse 24. So you see that a man is justified, pronounced righteous before God through what he does and not alone through faith. Through what you do. That is why I'm very tough on these young men. So you don't work, you don't eat, you don't come back to this church. Because it's a proof, it's an expression of what is in your heart. Laziness and an attitude. And God is not the God of beggars. God is the God of kings. He's called the king of kings. And we are the kings. And every king is found to be busy. Every king runs his own empire. Yeah. <laughs> You're told a house will crumble if you don't take care of it, if there is no work going on. If there is idleness in the house, if this building is not, nobody's in this building here for the next two years, without anyone doing anything, when you come, the carpet, there'll be dust, it'll be eaten off by what? Idleness. When you're idle, you're destroying your life. Yes. Nothing will come. When you're acting, you're building your life. Yes. A lot of things will come. Yes. Praise the Lord. Uh, you're justified through actions of obedience. Actions. That is what justifies you. Verse 25. So also with Rahab the harlot, was she not shown to be justified by good actions when she took in the scouts and sent them away by a different route. She did actions to prove her words that she believed Israel will take over Jericho. Someone says, you know, prophet, I believe, um, but just pray for me. I say, come to church. I just... Um, I know you're a man of God, but just, just pray for me. I said, no, you don't believe I'm a man of God. Because I can't be a man of God and you're arguing with me. Yes. So you, it shows your heart. It's full of deceit and hypocrisy. You don't believe. Yes. Verse 26. For as the human body apart from the spirit is lifeless, your body without the spirit is lifeless. Even so, faith without action the actions that, sh that show you believe what you say you believe in your heart, that kind of faith is dead. Now lift up your hands and thank God for what you've received. Lift up your hands and thank God for what you've received. Can you thank God loudly? Loudly. Masigra Farak Saka Praga Prafli Kosomra Vila Marakaskus Vanta kasi profla kena masi Vanta labitangari van malabari abasati Vante zakati